video, I'll try to give you a conceptual overview of electronegativity that we'll use some when we talk about the chemistry of biology. Let's start with H2 hydrogen molecule, which has two hydrogens. Each has a nucleus that has a single proton. Hydrogen's odd and not having a neutron. Each has one electron, and they're sharing the two electrons in a single covalent bond. One electron from one hydrogen, one electron from the other. You can think of the attraction of the electrons to the, each hydrogen as one positive attracting two electrons, or one positive, two negative. And that's true for each of them. We have a single positive attracting two electrons. The attraction is equivalent, and so the electrons are going to be spending just as much time near one nucleus as the other. They'll be constantly moving in this area, but they're evenly distributed. This will be a nonpolar molecule. Now let's look instead at a molecule that has hydrogen, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen just for the purposes of understanding how the electrons might be distributed. So the hydrogen has a single positive, single positive. Nitrogen has seven positive charges. The oxygen has eight, and this hydrogen has a single one. Here's an electron and an electron and an electron from the hydrogens. This nitrogen has a 1s shell with two electrons, and then an outer shell in which it's sharing electrons with these two hydrogens. It has two additional electrons here, and then it can share two electrons with this oxygen. And the oxygen has an innermost shell, a 1s, and it has an outermost shell. These two should be the same size with electrons here and here. So the nitrogen has three single bonds with hydrogen, hydrogen, and oxygen. The oxygen has two with the hydrogen and the nitrogen. Now let's look at the positive charge that's attracting these electrons. So again, for these hydrogens, we have one positive charge attracting two negative charges. One positive, two negative. One positive, two negative. In the case of oxygen, we have eight positive charges attracting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten negative charges. And in the case of nitrogen, we have seven positive charges attracting ten negative charges. What I hope you see is that the oxygen has eight charges to attract these ten in comparison to only seven positive charges to attract these ten, which should suggest that the oxygen is going to hold those electrons, attract those electrons a little bit more. In other words, the electrons will spend more time near the oxygen than near the nitrogen. Oxygen is a little more electronegative than nitrogen. In contrast, when we look at the oxygen and the hydrogen, we have 8 over 10. That's a little bit less than a 1 to 1 positive to negative, whereas this is only 1 half. These electrons are going to be much more strongly attracted to the oxygen than they are to the hydrogen. This hydrogen is actually electropositive. In other words, it pretty easily allows those electrons to be moved away. Let's compare nitrogen to these hydrogens. Well, we have 7 over 10 attracting versus only 1 half, 7 over 10, close to 2 thirds. These electrons are going to be attracted more toward the nucleus of the nitrogen than they are to the hydrogen. So what we have is the oxygen is most electronegative of these three. The nitrogen is electronegative, but not as much as 
the oxygen, and the hydrogens are actually electropositive. They're, in other words, less electronegative than either one. Here, I want to use the concept of electronegativity to get you thinking about why sodium and chloride so easily ionize in water. Sodium has 11 protons, atomic number 11. It has an innermost 1s shell with two electrons. The next orbital shell is filled with eight electrons. And then the next shell, which would be filled with eight, has only one. Chloride has 17 positive charges in the nucleus, atomic number 17, and 18 or 19 neutrons. It has an innermost shell with two electrons filled. The next one, the orbital shell, is also filled. And then the outermost shell is almost filled. It would be filled with 18, but it has 17 electrons. In both atoms, the third orbital is about the same distance from the positive charges in the nucleus. I haven't drawn them quite the right size. If we think now about what happens if we get sodium and chloride together, we'd have 11 positive charges attracting, if they're, if they're trying to share this electron, 12 negative charges. And we'd have 17 positive charges attracting 18 negative charges. Now this seems like there's not much of a difference between the two here, but we have to add in one additional effect. If these are trying to share, we have to look at the distance from the positive charge. In this case, we have 17 positive charges that are attracting this outermost shell. These electrons are further away, but there's more positive charge attracting them. Here, we have 11 that are attracting this outermost one. So at this particular distance, we have 11 protons attracting this electron that's further away, but this one in the same shell, the same distance away, we have 17 attracting them. So in this case, because we have so many more positives attracting electrons at the same distance, this electron easily gets pulled away. It's held in place by only 11 protons, and that's pretty far away, that first electron in the outermost shell. The more protons we have, the more tightly it's going to hold the electrons in that outermost shell. But sodium easily gives up an electron to become positive. And chloride, because it's got enough positive charges to hold that outermost shell quite tightly, uh, easily pulls in an electron to become chloride minus an ion.